When I was a little kid and growing up in Ohio, after a big rain, I dash outside in my bare feet and I run through the squishy grass. Then I jump in every puddle I could find. As an adult living in Somerville and Union Square, I still love walking around after a warm summer rain. But now I wear boots because I watch the water as it flows through the gutters, down the driveways, into the streets where it picks up pollutants and trash and then gushes into the storm drains. You've all seen this. Streets flood and our feet get soaked as we cross the road. Intense storms in the past few years have flooded basements, causing lots of damage. As average global temperatures rise, climate data shows an increase in the frequency and intensity of heavy storms here in the Northeast, with Massachusetts showing the biggest increase. What's happening here? And what can we do about it? The key is to understand the interconnections between flooding, water purification, and climate change. To look deeper into these questions, I needed some moral support. So a few years ago, I joined forces with fantastic people who share my hope for a sustainable Somerville. Here we are, Somerville Climate Action, marching in the Hong Parade. So how is flooding connected to water purification? Take a look to see how nature does it. What happens in nature during a rainstorm where soil is a living, breathing community of organisms? As the rain comes down, the ground drinks up water like a sponge. Deep roots from trees, shrubs, and tall grasses hold the dirt in place as the water seeps down. Decaying plants feed bacteria and fungi, which in turn break down dead wood and vegetation. Deeper down, fungi make the soil sticky, so when bugs and worms crawl through it, they create pockets of air. Bacteria and fungi also break down pollutants, and as a result, the water is purified as it slowly percolates down. It then seeps deep down into the water table. Finally, purified water flows into streams and rivers, which carry it into the ocean, where it evaporates to become the next rainstorm. How do we reduce flooding and purify storm water more naturally here in Somerville? We'll need more surfaces that soak up water. The hard surfaces here include roofs, driveways, streets, and paved backyards. Installing a green roof is a great way to allow roof surfaces to soak up water. Here's a green roof at St. Polycarp Village in Mystic Ave. An interlocking permeable pavement does a good job of allowing water to seep into driveways and roads. Our Somerville neighborhoods are the most densely populated in the Boston area. We have a population of almost 80,000 and only 23% of our land will absorb water. This means that 77% is covered with impervious surfaces. So how do these hard surfaces change what happens during a rainstorm? Now they make a barrier that prevents the soil from drinking up the rain. Most of the rainwater is no longer returned purified to the water table, but instead goes directly into the sewer pipes. So we've seen solutions for roofs, driveways, and streets. But what can a homeowner do if they no longer want their backyard to be paved over and instead want to transform it into green space? We were inspired by an event organized in the spirit of a barn raising where a group of Portland activists pried up a parking lot. It's called depaving. Steve, a Somerville homeowner, had just bought his house in Winter Hill with a large backyard. He dreamed of having a nice big vegetable garden, but it seemed impossible given it was covered with asphalt. No one in his house owns a car, so having a large paved area seemed out of place. So we had our first depaving party. People brought all sorts of baked goods and delicious homemade dishes. 45 volunteers of all ages pitched in that day. People who met for the first time got to know each other by working side by side. We rolled up our sleeves and donated our time to get that asphalt out of there. It feels great to be doing something physical that makes a difference. Anyone can do this. And asphalt can easily be recycled by simply melting it down. It took us just one day from start to finish the energy generated by a group of people working together 
to permanently improve a neighborhood is exhilarating. But why should we go to all this trouble to mimic nature's way of purifying water? Here's why. In Somerville, we have a sewer system that combines sewage with stormwater runoff. It's more than 100 years old. And in dry weather, the system works fine. Waste from our kitchens and bathrooms flow into the sewer pipes and then are carried off to the treatment plant at Deer Island by the airport. You may have seen these huge egg-shaped digesters. However, during a heavy rainstorm, the sewer pipes fill up with water, which combines with human waste. When the system gets overwhelmed, this water overflows the dam, empties into the Mystic and Charles rivers, and then raw sewage is dumped directly into the ocean. Soil health also suffers under hard surfaces. The sample on my left is from my neighborhood composted garden. On the right is Steve's soil that had been under asphalt for 10 years. Notice that the composted soil is dark brown, has a texture, and contains bugs and worms and fungi. In contrast, the soil on the right is gray compacted and contains almost nothing living. So it's great to get that asphalt pried up and carted away but then what can you do with your DPAY property? How can the land be optimized to reduce the extent of climate change? Homeowners can plant bushes and trees for shade and create rain gardens designed specifically to soak up and hold rainwater the way nature does. Here's a rain garden at St. Polycarp Village on Mystic Ave. Over time, this will regenerate healthy soil. Or you can bring in new, healthy soil and enjoy eating yummy fruits and vegetables grown in raised beds. Remember that chunk of asphalt we saw in Steve's backyard? It took one day of depaving and only one year of nature doing its thing to transform it into a, lot, a yard bursting with beautiful flowers. We'll want to choose drought-resistant native plants. Although grass lawns are an improvement over asphalt, the root depth is very shallow. Also, plants convert carbon dioxide to oxygen and carbohydrates through the process of photosynthesis and thereby help reduce climate change. Photosynthesis is the most important process on the planet, and the more we can do to encourage it, the better off we'll all be. Livestock can also be included to put carbon into the soil through the manure. Okay, we've seen that in New England, climate change brings us more flooding, which impacts water purification. So we'll need plants with deep roots to build soil that drinks up and purifies water. And even a small deep paved space can make a difference. In New York City, artist Natalie Jeremenko deep paves parking spaces in front of fire hydrants, which are illegal to park in anyway. She then creates rain gardens. When the fire trucks come and squash the plants, the injured ones grow back or are simply replaced. Wouldn't it be great to do this in Somerville? <laughs> okay, so here's what we have, 77% impervious surfaces. And here's what we want, more green space and water that soaks at the soil that soaks up water like a sponge. What would it take to increase permeable surfaces in our neighborhood to say 50%? Somerville is on its way with several deep pavings last summer and five more scheduled for this spring and summer. Even in Somerville, we humans are a part of nature. We need the courage, hope, and action to cooperate with each other and with nature's ecosystems. What would happen if we shifted our focus from the American dream home to the American dream neighborhood? Thanks so much to all those who helped me with this talk, and thanks to all of you for listening.